You've learned about PMF for discrete random variables, and in this video, you're going to learn about the continuous version of a PMF. So we're going to talk about continuous random variables. So remember that we have discrete random variables and continuous random variables. And for discrete random variables, we can um, have a finite number of values that that discrete random variable takes on, or there may be a countably infinite number of values that it takes on. For a continuous random variable, there are uncountably many values that this continuous random variable could take on. Um, so usually the way that we describe the uh, values that the continuous random variable could take on is with a interval or maybe a union of intervals. So for example, we could be looking at the speed of a car and this speed could be anywhere between zero and then including zero and then up to but not including infinity. So there's no upper limit to how fast a car could travel. Um, another example of a continuous random variable, we could look at the difference in the age of two partners. So if we look at the age of partner one minus the age of partner two, this difference is going to be in the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, not including those two endpoints. So this interval is called uh, the real numbers. Um, so that's because there is no limit to how much older partner one could be than partner two, and there's no limit to how much older partner two is compared to partner one. All right, so when we were talking about a discrete random variable x, then we either had or we could create a PMF, p sub x of k, and remember that is equal to the probability that x equals k. And we could use this PMF to characterize x. And remember, uh, a couple qualities about this PMF, uh, it's always greater than or equal to zero. So for every single value that x takes on, it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. And if we sum up all the values of our PMF, so plugging in each value that our random variable could take on, sum it all up, that equals one. Okay, so let's think about, could we just directly apply this discrete PMF to the continuous case, the continuous random variable? Well, remember we said that we have uncountably many values that our continuous random variable could take on. So how are we supposed to sum over all of the values? There are uncountably many. So where would we start? And even if we did choose a place to start, say we just started at the value zero, what would be the next value that we would add up? There's no uh, next value on the, in the real numbers. So what we need to do is come up with a continuous version of this PMF. So here's a definition for you. A probability function P on a set of real numbers F is called continuous if there exists a function F of P such that for all intervals A to B contained in F, the probability of the interval A to B is equal to, and now here we're going to integrate from A to B, so from the lower endpoint of our interval to the upper endpoint of our interval, and we're integrating over this function f of t. And of course, we're integrating with respect to p. All right, so now what we've got is instead of summing up over all values, like we had in the discrete case, we are integrating all the values, integrating over all the values in our continuous case. And if we want to calculate a probability, then we um, do this integral. Okay, so this is one thing. A similar thing is suppose you have some function f of t such that it's non-negative everywhere. So in other words, f of t is greater than or equal to zero for all values of t. And if we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity over f of t, then this integral is going to be equal to one. All right, so suppose this is true if the probability of A is equal to the integral of f of t over A for all A contained in um, our sample space, then P will satisfy the probability axiom that we learned about a few weeks ago that are attributed to Kolmogorov. Okay, so we have the equivalent of the PMF, it's this f of t thing, 
we're going to call it the PDF, probability density function. And if we want to calculate a probability for some interval, A to B, then we're going to integrate over that interval. Okay, so here we have different values of T, and here we have F of T, and maybe this is what F of T looks like. So it's positive everywhere, here's zero. If we want to integrate from A to B, then that will give us the probability that our random variable is between A and B. So that's how we'll use it. We'll do lots more examples in um, upcoming videos.